Hello, everybody, and welcome. Uh, welcome to today's session. Uh, my name is Nellie Deutsch, and I hope you can hear me and see me. If you could just add in the chat box where you're from and anything else you'd like to add, please feel free to uh, use the chat box to uh, add as we go. And uh, this session is uh, the final one for the ePortfolio. So, uh, but it's not the end of ePortfolios since, as you know, ePortfolios are ongoing. So uh, you're going to be working your ePortfolio, I hope, for a long, long time. All right. So uh, if you have any questions as you go about previous classes, or anything else, don't feel that it has to be connected, even if it's uh, not really connected. You can still add it to the chat box. So, uh, where are you from? And is this the first time that uh, you're taking a class with me? I'm going to add uh, a link to the course uh, in case you haven't joined it. The name of the course, it's a free course, it's uh, an annual course, it's going to end at the end of June, it started I believe in October, uh, and it's called Learning to Blend and Flip with Technology. All right, so we're going to get started. Um, people will be watching uh, the video as we go. All right, so ePortfolio. As um, you all know, and if you don't know, feel free to uh, ask questions in the chat, is electronic portfolio. And an electronic portfolio allows you to learn and share. It's lifelong learning. It doesn't stop. And it's your way of documenting what you learn. Now, the learning could be in courses. It could be... Uh, something that you've read, a TV program, it could be anything, wherever learning happens to be. It could be something that happened at the supermarket where you <laughs> learned something. So it's lifelong learning and it's about life. It's also a chance for you to add your resume. Those of you who had a chance, um, by the way, if you could raise your hand to join the Mahara, which is completely free. Okay, mahara.integratingtechnology.org. Okay, there's the Mahara where you can find an easy way. I'm going to take away my video because the, the connection is uh, giving me problems. Okay, so you'll just hear my voice. So have you joined the Mahara? Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Okay, you can go into the smiley there. And um, thumbs up, thumbs down, if you have an account on the Mahara. Or if you have any questions. All right, so I'd, so you haven't, but you're able to. You can do this at the end of uh, the session. You can also join the course and ask questions in the course feed. And there's lots of information in the course where now these may be words that you're not familiar with. Uh, course feed are discussions, and courseware is the content. All right, so let's get started. But please feel free. This is the last session. Uh, we've done a lot of work on ePortfolios. So if you're not sure of anything and you haven't been uh, following the course, don't feel bad. Just add your questions. All right. If portfolios allow us to do more than get our resumes up, they allow us to evaluate what we do. That means that you can reflect, and I'll go a little bit more into that. You can reflect. Reflecting means how you feel about what you learned. You can also experience learning. Many people think that learning is about taking exams and um, and that's it. But no, it's not. Learning is about experiencing what you learn. And experiencing what you learn is not the information that you get. It's how you feel about the information. 
And this may be very new to you because you may have until this day always done exams at the end of some kind of learning or that you're after information. Well, ePortfolios are not about hoarding information. They are about using the information and reflecting on the information so that the information can be used in a meaningful way. Exactly. Thank you, Stella. Reconstructing and updating. And the progression. Now, progression means that you improve and you learn as you go. And sometimes learning is not always going forward. Sometimes it's going backwards. Sometimes it's like a waltz. <laughs> you take two steps forwards and then you take one step back. So it's like a dance. It's not always straightforward. And what you're developing is a kind of competence. You're learning about learning. Okay, so it's learning about learning, but not other people's learning. It's learning about your personal learning. And some say that that's what life is about. It's about what we learn as we live and as we encounter different things. So you can think of an e-portfolio as a learning journal where you document and reflect on your learning. And these are some of the questions that you may wish to ask. Okay, hello Skypolist. Uh, one is, what have I learned? And that's very easy, but don't feel like it's an exam where you have to say everything. You only say what you remember. And keeping a learning journal is uh, something that you can do on a daily basis. You can do it every day. And you can ask yourself every day, what have I learned today? Or you can do it weekly, monthly, and so on, or just periodically. So the question you might ask is, what have I learned today? That's right, Stella, that's right. Better going back than continue in the wrong direction. That's a good point, too. So what have I learned today? Well, maybe you learned how to waltz. Okay, there's something about waltzing and uh, keeping a learning journal. How do I feel about it? And this part is really, really important because if we want to sustain learning and make it meaningful for ourselves, and of course, we're going to do this with our students later on, then we need to add emotions. Emotions are a huge part of learning. You know, studies have been done, recent studies, showing that it's not only cognition, but that it's both. It's both how we feel and the information. And you can't really retrieve information and use it effectively unless you add how you feel. Your emotions are very, very important. Hello, Susanna. Okay, so keep that in mind, how you feel. You might not want to tell other people how you feel, but reflect and think about it. And the next question is, where can I apply it? Where can I apply what I have learned? And it could be something that you learned about yourself. So where can I apply this? Maybe in my life, maybe with my children. Hello, Ice from Turkey. Maybe um, with my friends or students or, okay. So where can I apply this learning that I learned about learning and the information? And the next question is, how does it fit in with my life? And I think this is the number one point of a learning journal or an e-portfolio. Hello, Jack. Good to see you. Is that it's not only how you feel, but how does it fit with your life? Otherwise, why are we learning? Okay, what's the point of learning anything unless it fits in with our lives and it helps us, as Stella says, move forward and maybe backwards a bit, but move forward and ultimately uh, make us better people. And these are some other questions. I said you can make this a daily or a weekly learning journal. So what did I learn about myself as a learner? 
Notice, as a learner. So there's no criticism here. You're not criticizing the teacher. You're not criticizing where you got the information. It's You're not criticizing anybody. It's just about you as a learner. What did I learn about my emotional? And here again, as I said, our emotions are a big part of uh, who we are and what and how we learn. Okay, so my emotions. How did I respond? Okay, what emotions or feelings were there? It takes time, it takes practice, because sometimes we don't know what we feel. We don't know what emotions accompany learning. But with practice, it comes. Exactly, Suzanne. It's to be involved in your own learning process and learn about you because we're all completely different. And once we realize that we learn in different ways because we have different goals and different feelings about information and how we learn and what happens, uh, the easier it will be to accept others for how they learn and for being individuals who don't have to be like us. Okay, No one has to be like us. And that's a very important aspect of learning, that it's individual. Next, what tasks were easy? Now, easy means, could mean different things. Why was it easy? What made it easy? Okay, what tasks were most difficult? What did you find difficult? And what aspect of it was difficult? No blaming, of course, okay? Uh, you don't blame yourself. You don't make excuses. You just kind of face things the way they are. What would I do differently? Exactly, Susanna. This is an excellent. I, I get my high school students to reflect and I'm amazed because these are, um, they're learning English as a foreign language. They're English as a foreign language learners and writing is a big problem. But once they relate to, they feel that they're writing about something personal and they add their feelings to it, their writing becomes so much better. You know, the less grammar mistakes, uh, their vocabulary is a lot better. It's amazing how um, the feedback that you get, the quality of the work that you get is so much better when uh, people add themselves to it. And um, what am I proudest about regarding my learning activities? And being proud is very, very important. Because, and, and it's not a, a question of being a show-off. You know, in some cultures, they may say, well, you're not supposed to be proud. Uh, keep things to yourself. You do keep it to yourself. You don't have to go around boasting, hey, look at me, I'm great. No, but your feelings about your accomplishments are very important. And then, of course, what do I feel most dissatisfied with regarding my learning activities? Okay, what am I not happy with? And it's only you. Okay, keep that in mind. It's how you feel. One of the um, really, really important um, discoveries, discoveries, there's a lot of research that's been going on in self compassion. One of the uh, people, who started this? Well, she did. She um, wrote a book. I say she didn't start it because self compassion um, has been going on since, uh, I guess, the first, since way back when man started self reflecting, which was a long time ago. Uh, but a lot of research has been done, and uh, Kristen Neff, okay, Dr. Kristen Neff. Uh, was one of the first people to actually uh, document the importance of self-compassion. Uh, before her, there's Dr. Richard. I think you should look him up. He's absolutely amazing. He's been doing work since um, the early 70s. Richard Davidson, J. Richard J, because there are a few, uh, J. Davidson has done work on emotions and cognition and the importance of emotions. So the idea is that you look at yourself and you like yourself. Okay, this is something that 
uh, we have lost, many of us has lost, have lost the sense of we are compassionate to others. Okay, we care about other people, we care about our children, but we forget to care about ourselves. We kind of leave ourselves out. But self compassion is very important in learning, and that's what showcasing is about. Showcasing our achievements means that we have to look at ourselves and not put ourselves down. In other words, we have to pick ourselves up and be compassionate about ourselves. We have to care for ourselves. Yeah, I'll share the link, Susanna, in a minute uh, with Richard J. Davidson. I've been listening to his uh, audio books. Just amazing. In the last research, I'll share that with you. Um, one other um, uh, article that you can get online for free is Sanity in Sanity and Common Sense, which is about being happy. How easy it is for people to be happy. Uh, it's by uh, Zueras and Mills. It's completely free. And um, it started something called uh, Mind Psychology. Not the mind, but Mind Psychology. And they've also done studies on people and the self and the importance of self-awareness and self-compassion. Okay, and that's where the sharing is caring. When you share something with someone, it's because you care. You care about yourself and you care about them. So what is self-compassion? Okay, let me write the name of Neff. Um, Kristen, I'll write her name. If you Google it, Kristen, let me write it correctly, Kristen Neff. Self, I think there was um, a documentary done about her. Uh, she had, she was a student, she was a PhD student. Uh, she fell in love. She married uh, the guy. And then uh, they got divorced. And uh, she was beating herself up. She felt really, really bad about it. And that's how she um, decided to do her PhD on self-compassion and the importance of not beating yourself up. And uh, the book is called Stop Beating Yourself Up and Leave Insecurity Behind. Okay, so it's stop beating yourself up. And we all do this, you know, um, beating yourself up and leave insecurity behind. So the idea is to lift yourself instead of putting yourself down. So self-compassion is um, hugging yourself from the inside and caring about yourself. And when that's right, very good. Thank you, Jack. So when you take care of yourself, you're actually uh, worth a lot more to your family and your loved ones uh, because um, people who do not like themselves and who do not take care of themselves uh, are obese. They don't take care of their health. And then um, their families suffer because they get sick. And um, that's not a good thing. Self-compassion. Uh, Self-compassion means um, the same as uh, compassion. If you know what compassion, compassion means sympathy. If something happens to someone on the street, you see somebody fall, what are you going to do? Okay, uh, yes, if you see someone fall on the street, you'll go and help them. You'll run, you'll take care of them, you'll, you'll, you'll care about them. So self-compassion is doing the same thing to yourself that you would do to somebody else. It's taking care of yourself, caring about yourself. Now, the only way you can do that is if you become aware of who you are and you see the good things in you. 
instead of uh, listening to a voice that says you're not good, you tell yourself that you are. So it's a lot of positive, as Jack mentioned, a lot of positive self-talk. Oh, does it Guadalupe? What does it mean in, uh, in Spanish? Because we're talking about self-compassion. So what is compassion in Spanish? I think it's the same thing, but let's see. Self-acceptance, self, but it's more, it's not just self-acceptance, Stella. It's actually yeah, tolerance to yourself. It's actually taking care of yourself. If you get hurt, you take care of yourself, just like you would somebody else. Pity. No, it's not pity. Um, when you care about someone, you don't pity them. Um, pity is something negative. You just take care of them because you believe them. You believe in them. I think that even in Spanish, there's the word passion. If you take the word passion, passion means love, right? Compassion means giving love to other people. Self-compassion means giving love to yourself. It's actually loving yourself. Okay, so when you think about it, what does it mean to love yourself? It doesn't mean that you're selfish. It's not about being selfish. It's the opposite, I would say, of, um, that's right, it's more than an art. It takes practice. It takes a lot of practice, and there are different ways of doing it. And in the book, uh, Self-Compassion, she has a few, um, actually a few uh, methods of how you can learn to be self-compassionate. Um, and being kind to yourself. Okay, so what does it mean to be kind? Be kind to yourself. If you tell yourself in the morning, that was a terrible thing I did. I'm no good. Nobody likes me. I'm not a good person. If you have this internal talk and you are not kind to yourself, that is not self-compassion. Self-compassion is being kind to yourself the way you would to somebody else. If somebody comes to you and tells you, if you're, one of your children uh, comes to you and tells you, I'm no good, nobody likes me, I'm not worth anything, what do you tell them? Oh, you are, you're wonderful, you're, you're, you're lovely, you're pretty, you have so many good things about you. Well, that's what it's about. It's about self-compassion, being kind to yourself. Kind to yourself. That's right, Jack. That's right. But kind, what does it mean to be kind to yourself? If you could just write that in the chat box now, what is one way you will be kind to yourself? I'll write what it is for me. For me to be kind to myself is to get enough sleep. Get enough sleep, number one. Number two, eat healthy food. That's being kind. To Nelly. Number three. Okay, what else? That's right. Okay, so get enough sleep is being kind to myself. Eating healthy food is being kind to myself. Uh, doing enough exercises is being kind to myself. Um, exercises. What else is being kind to myself? Number four. Um, doing the gardening is being kind to myself. Because if I don't do the gardening, the weeds are going to grow and grow and grow, and then I'll feel bad. 
Okay, so if you think, what makes you feel bad? And then you do the opposite. You make yourself feel good. That's right. But we have to find out what these are. Okay, and that's self-awareness. We have to be aware of what is good for us and what is not good for us. Okay, positive feelings. Exactly. If we go like this every day, oh, you know, if we do that every day, we are not good to ourselves. We are not kind to ourselves. Okay, that's very, very bad. So, nurture exactly, exactly, exactly Guadalupe. Yes. That's right. Things that nurture you, things that are good for you. And sometimes even a hug, a self-hug is good. Or, you know, patting yourself like this is better than smacking yourself. And some people do. Some people really hurt themselves. You know, physically, mentally, morally. <laughs> Befriend. Very good. Excellent. Escapulist. That's right. Okay, so sometimes, and the studies they've done is that our brain doesn't know whether it's real or not. You can't lie, you can lie to your brain. So if you tell your brain you are beautiful, your brain, you will feel beautiful. But if you tell your brain that you're ugly, you'll feel ugly. So when you wake up in the morning, look in the mirror and say, I'm wonderful, I'm beautiful, say good things, and that's how you'll feel. Because the brain will take care of of uh, the hormones that will make you feel good. That's right. Focus on your gifts. Very good, Susanna. And there's a great book on imperfection. Where is the book? I think I put it away. It's behind me. On uh, by Brene Brene Brown. She's got a book out called um, "Loving Your Imperfections," loving everything about you. And not being hard on yourself. All right. And once we do that, once we are kind to ourselves, it's much easier to be kind to others. Much, much easier. And then everybody benefits. We benefit because we feel good, and other people will benefit because they will feel good. That's right. It's congruent. Exactly. 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 But sometimes we have to say it or think it. And then everybody will be able to see it too and feel it. All right. Um, before we go, what I want to do is I want to share. Uh, let me uh, get the two things that I want to share. this let me just uh, move this here share this uh, this is the name of the book that I was uh, going to refer you to the emotional life of your brain uh, the book as I said was written by Richard J Davidson and um, it's a new book it just came out in um, there's also an audiobook if you like to listen to books it came out in 2012, well actually first published in 2013, so it came out last year. Uh, the studies have been going on since the 70s, and it certainly is an eye-opener. But what's interesting is that he starts chapter one with, one brain does not fit all. And he discusses emotional, I'll write it down for you. He discusses emotional style, emotional style, and the importance of emotional style to learning and managing your life. physical 
and mental. Yes, that's right, it is pampering yourself. It very much is so pampering. All right, so this is uh, the last class the portfolio. And I'd like to thank everyone uh, for joining. I'm looking forward to seeing your e-portfolio. I don't see Helena here. I think that Helena is um, one of the people. Oh, hello, Nurbert. Good to see you. How many of you have started your e-portfolio? Because the idea is to um, do your electronic portfolio as a journal of learning and to keep yourself kind to yourself and not lose hope but believe that good things come oh is it frozen that good things come when you're kind to yourself so oh you lost me i hope you didn't lose me i hope i'm back so uh thank you thank you so much thank you for joining and please go into the course okay here is the uh, the link to the course again so you can ask questions and if you want to get the um, the PowerPoint presentation I made it public so you can get it online there we are and I'm also going to add this, I think it's this one. Yeah, there it is. There is the uh, PowerPoint presentation, which you can get as well. So thank you. Uh, next month, which is actually starting uh, next week, we're going to have the sessions on Saturday. And um, the topic for May is the wiki. We're going to be discussing wikis. So if you don't know much about wikis, uh, I think wikis are a nice uh, topic to come after ePortfolios and self-compassion because they're a great way to uh, collaborate and connect. So see you then. Uh, Jack, you asked if these will be on my page. Um, what page are you referring to? What page? Oh, Facebook. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I'm not sure, but um, maybe I will. Maybe I will add them on Facebook as well, Jack. That's a good idea, actually. I'll try to get them on Facebook, too. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Great uh, having you here and see you um, next week. Have a wonderful uh, weekend and um, week. Bye for now.